High flying duck drive. There's a mixed bag for Andy on a Jack Pike shoot day. Some of the best ducks I've ever seen. Michaela is stalking seeker stags. And in news, we meet the Hunt's habiteur who, when not being a school teacher, is down at the hunt beating up a child. And what a lovely lady she is. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. in plum and gorgeous in green. I quite like the burgundy as it goes. Whereas some models refuse to get out of bed for less than £10,000, Andy's happy to say cheese for a chance of a shot at pheasant, partridge and duck. Today he's a guest of Jack Pike as a thank you for his support of their brand, but between drives he needs to strike a pose for their new catalogue. They're going to do a photo shoot so I'll be chopping and changing, changing new clothes. The British company has arranged the day through Paul at Childerley Sporting in Bedfordshire and it promises to be a fun day with plenty of banter. First things first and Crow has a new smokestick that would grace the catwalks of Milan. It's a Parazzi. It's a Parazzi MX-12 and it's shooting full and three quarters and it is tight as in a duck's. That's how tight it is. Something I've always wanted but I'm not going to fold it, but I've got it to try out at the moment. Seem to be getting on all right with it. It don't get many chippy ones with it. The first drive delivers regular bursts of partridge with the odd pheasant thrown in, which can look pedestrian by comparison. I have done a bit of game shooting. I was up where well, I usually go up on the downs there uh, a couple of weeks ago. I had a lovely day up there, real high stuff. Trying out the new uh, pepperoni gun. Um, got them really well up there, so see how we do here today. I'm using a lighter cartridge today. A new drive and a change of clothing. I think they're talking about navy blue on the next one, but we'll see. Again, Andy only raises his gun to the sporting birds. We shot mainly partridge on the last two drives. Some have stayed low, but that's partridge. But some have flown really well. There was a couple come out early on. They went right up there. We've got a bit of wind today and it's lifting them right up. And that's, it's a couple of real long ones. That's some nice birds off there. Time for 11s and the tasty morsels don't stick around for long. It's a chance to chat to Paul about the shoot here. Paul from the right. It's about the whole day, it's not just about the, the shooting side of it, it's about the hospitality and, and running, running the day and, and keeping the team happy, you know. Um, it's great, great ground for partridge, undulated uh, ground, um, sandy soil, so we, we do some great like, partridge days. Then we go on to the mixed days. But November time, we can cater for any any size day really. Um, obviously, depending on what time time of year, what type part of the season it is. 200 to 250 bird days, great day. Put on the full hospitality in the shoot lodge uh, with with a three course lunch. Yeah, meet for coffee in the mornings and then uh, yeah, it's, it's a full day. The third drive of the day offers some more good sport. On ground like this, you're not going to get extreme West Country birds, but the partridge are flying really fast. So what shell would dyed in the wool game ball shooter Andy recommend for a mixed day's sport like this one? I'm using 32 gram fives, but somewhere like on the downs, uh, people say I'll go overkill, but I'd sooner be overkill and kill what's shooting at. So I use uh, fours up there, 36s, yeah. yeah. and if you hit them, it stops them. You, you know these aren't going to be mega high, so you can kill them with a 32, no trouble at all. A seven, a die off quick, whereas a number five, on number four, a punch on a bit further. That's, that's the difference. The last drive of the day is the duck drive. It's not easy to deliver good high ducks, and Andy is sceptical, but not for long.
You're having a laugh. These are some duck, I tell you. What's these pair? There you go. Cheers, Paul. Oh, top job, well shot, well shot. That's good, Some good birds there actually, weren't they? Cracking birds. I've shot ducks. I've shot a lot of ducks, but I'll tell you. Yep. Usually what they do, or every other place I've ever shot ducks, you push them off, yeah. they come off, they bang at them, they just go out, and then they come back about 10 gunshots high. Yeah. But these... Nice variety, isn't it? Just low ones, high ones, packed, singles. Yeah, it's great. Can you pick your bird like that. Yeah. I see, it's sensible, pick some nice birds, it makes... Like that. With the cracking drive, yeah. yeah. I probably would have hit that. Also, we've got, they go off to other ponds, so they go out to more of the ponds they go to. Do they? So they're not all coming back into... We've got a big reservoir here, it's about three and a half acres. Yeah. And then we've got a small acre pond and another two or three little flight ponds. Yeah. Which is great because, like, you know, they just... They don't get hammered. They don't get hammered. And, uh, this is unbelievable. Look at them coming back yeah, in. Well, well that's the highlight of my day. Yeah, some good birds there. Seriously good birds. They're cracking ducks, brilliant ducks. We try and get them really wild, get them in early and uh, yeah, yeah, do, it, do it properly. Crow might have had to work it today, but it hasn't stopped him shooting it as well. Andy looking pretty in plum there. And talking of plum, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A hunt saboteur who was also a school teacher has been convicted of assaulting a child at a hunt. Megan Thornbury, pictured here, attacked a 15-year-old boy. The member of the three counties saboteurs was convicted of assault on a minor, among other counts, and sentenced at Hereford Magistrates Court to 80 hours community service and a £500 fine. She has also lost her job as a teacher. Thanks to the Facebook group Ban Hunt Saboteurs for publicising the case. There's a new famous face in the Essex fox hunting set. The lead singer of dance band The Prodigy, Keith Flint, has bought hunters and taken up hunting. Since he became the target of antis, however, he's issued a statement to say he's only been trail hunting. Country singer Craig Strickland has been found dead. The lead singer of Back Road Anthem was duck hunting in a boat on an Arkansas lake in a storm with a friend, Chase Morland, who also died. Barack Obama plans to make gun buying in America more difficult. He plans tighter background checks and wants to close a loophole that allows people to buy guns without checks at gun shows. American gun owners are not happy. In the flooded areas of Aberdeenshire, there's an emerging tragedy for anglers. Fishing huts have been swept away, many of them containing records going back decades. Among the worst hit is the Aberdeen and District Angling Association. It's appealing for anyone who's photographs or records of its fishings. The last major flood in the area was 1937, and the one before that was Royal Dee's famous muckle spate of 1829. We've had an indoor success this week. Some of our positive, upbeat films about hunting and shooting have gone viral, millions of views, but none quite as fast as this one. It's Roy Lupton launching an eagle on a hare in Lincolnshire which has had 10 million views on Facebook in a week. I wonder who filmed that? Less of a success is news that a Briton faces jail in Kyrgyzstan after comparing a local delicacy of horse meat sausage to a horse's penis. Regular viewers will know that on a recent Ibex hunting trip to Kyrgyzstan, I was fooled into believing that this local delicacy was <laughs> Pony's testicles. Charlie is believed to be helping Kyrgyz extradition officers with their inquiries. And finally, there's a new and dangerous group of saboteurs on Facebook. The Orkney Hunt Saboteurs are dedicated to stopping the haggis hunt on the Scottish islands, and as terrifying a group of young anarchists you could not hope to meet. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, 2016 means numerous summer game fairs are under starter's orders. Will there be any fallers? Which ones will cross the finishing line? Well, ahead of the summer scrum, next month, it's the British Shooting Show.
So there, you can get your tickets online. Next up, it's the controversial Czech. Michaela Fialová is after Seeker Stags. You may think your stags are special and your bucks real beauties, but for many hunters in continental Europe, the gold standard of deer stalking is Hungary. Its warm, rich, broadleafed and coniferous forests grow stags and bucks of great size, which head out into the European equivalent of the Serengeti. It is a country set up for hunting with high seats all over rural areas and plenty of nice places to stay within easy reach of deer. Hungary itself is in easy reach of the Czech Republic, home to the ever-cosmic Michaela. It all starts in a train. Well, I'm sitting in a train in a Prague station and I'm heading to Hungary for some hunt. Um, it should be a red stag, maybe something else, I don't know. I'm going to meet the guy from Huntropfy.com which is a new website for hunters it should be like a social site for hunters and i'm going to hunt with them i should be using a blazer rifle and we'll see now michaela gets to budapest in the dark and transfers to a car for the last leg of the journey but i heard the hungarian hunting in a free range the red stags are awesome and the big, big trophies. Michaela spots a roebuck moving into the maize crop. So exciting. It's worth having a walk around with the night vision to see what else is out there. Even the night sounds a little African. I just arrived and this house. is a welcome drink with my new friends and <laughs> hope you will be lucky tomorrow. We will go to the uh, sitting the high chair, and okay. uh, we we wait the uh, sun the up, and uh, uh, after go to the walking this uh, over first uh, first place uh, forest. The following morning, and the estate reveals itself as magnificent. The hunt starts with zeroing the Blaza R8 and checking that Michaela can shoot straight. Michaela and her stalker head out to the forests. They set up first in a high seat. Michaela is hunting here thanks to HuntTrophy.com. Based in Hungary, it is a new global social network that allows hunters from around the world to share knowledge and information. You can upload photos and hunting stories to your own page, like Facebook. The website supports the work of hunting organisations around the world and its aim is to put every huntable game species on display with their habitat and zoological description. Usually on my Facebook page or Instagram you can meet the green people and tree huggers who write their opinions uh, below your posts and they can be you know, cruel and disgusting. And this uh, website try avoid this. So I back at the high seat, and a stag comes into view, but it doesn't stay for long. Well, after sitting in this high seat, we decide to walk a little bit and maybe see some more deer. I'm a little bit more optimistic because we've seen some stag. It was a younger guy, so we didn't shoot, but it's good. We see. It's a short walk, and you can make your Michaela's got the horn jokes now. Then they spot her stag. Well, I just shot a red stag. Um, it happened so fast. We were on the way back, and then my guide and me, we just saw him, how he's standing there and just watching. So I take a rifle and sit down and make a shot. 
After giving it a chance to stop, Michaela and her stalker start to look for the animal. A drop of blood shows the direction the beast has gone. I'm following the plaster eggs and like 20, 30 metres from where we shot the red stag, he's lying, just following me to see him. Wow. Well, yeah. This is it. This is what we was about for. It was pretty tough hunt and I was losing my mind this morning. And I was thinking okay, I'm going home without the red steak. And now I'm here and my red steak is here and I'm really happy. It's been a stunning trip, a beautiful country and a wonderful trophy hunt. For more on Michaela, go to michaelkashunting.com and for more about the new social network, go to hunttrophy.com. Well done, Michaela. Now, from hunting in Eastern Europe to hunting all over the world, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Ahmed Kol, I can't pronounce his surname, is duck hunting in the desert. He's after poached on the Hafanli Dam in Turkey, just 300 miles from the Syrian border. Just to bring you back to what you are likely to be more used to, Jacob Smith is also duck hunting, but in a more traditional way in North Carolina, USA. Staying with birds, falconry has been a big deal for us recently and for others. In this well-made film, Oliver Connor, also in North Carolina, Carolina takes to the great outdoors with a passage Cooper's Hawk and an energetic Vizsla. Jaeger magazine looks a lot like it is going down the video route. It's traditional German-driven hunting. Felu Chasse is also on a driven hunt, shooting three wild boar in the Vosges, which is a place in France, not a vital area. This is his 100th video route. Reenactment meets deer stalking in this film by Leatherwood Outdoors. A revolutionary war veteran and a frontier station hunter are in western Pennsylvania with a .58 caliber and a 50 cal flintlock muzzle loader to Africa where Hunt Productions is on a waterbuck hunt with Leopards Valley Safaris in the Eastern Cape. And finally, our Jamie Chandler is not the only shooter with no hands on YouTube. Viewer Alan Sipling sends me this film of Nubs, the no-handed shooter. Yeah, Jamie would point out that Nubs is part bionic. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you don't like those, perhaps you'll like this. It's Club Digweed. OK, so here we are in position two, which is now a true standard right to left crosser. In this month's Club Digweed, George is using a single trap setup and moving around it to create four very different practice birds. He explains where the pickup point is from position one, 20 yards away, to position 4, 80 yards from the trap. George also talks through some simple tips to make sure your shells are looked after over the winter. I mean, they are a product that is very, very susceptible to changes in temperature. To find out more about the club or to download the show, go to clubdigweed.com. And then there's our air gun show airheads. This week, Kai at Bryn is at the Air Arms so factory Chris, looking at how they today. repair air rifles. It's Click on the link on the screen for more. We are back next week. If you have not done so already, please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. Click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, pop your email address into our constant contact box, and we'll constantly contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.